Coming up, island invasion. Immigration officials descend on Abaco looking to wipe out illegal migrants. Taking a break, find out why jurors in a trial have been sent home for the weekend. Coming up in the Bahamas tonight, Operation Demolition by the police is in full swing. Now in HD. ZNS Network presents The Bahamas Tonight. This portion of the news brought to you by BTC Every Day. The Department of Immigration has moved in on Abaco, where officers for the last few months have been preparing to crack down on that island's illegal population. Good evening, everyone. I'm Charisma Robinson. And I'm Chris Saunders. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, this move was further pushed after it was reported that a group of 60 Haitian nationals landed on that island last week and simply blended into nearby shanty towns. Department officials have also reported that a Bahamian citizen was charged with attempting to assault immigration officers with a knife. And with that in mind, Immigration Minister the Honorable Fred Mitchell noted that police and Defense Force officers are on standby should their assistance be needed. Today, though, Immigration Director William Pratt reported there were no similar incidents and they were able to take 55 illegal immigrants into custody. Among them, 42 males, 10 females and 3 children. We got word that an illegal boat landed there with about 60 persons uh, undetected and they, they probably went into the mud or the pigeon pea. So we want to try to focus on at least see how many of those illegal persons we can capture. In addition to that, we are trying to enforce the immigration law that everyone who is in Abaco have a legal right to be there. We move our team to supplement our Abaco um, operation. We have some officers from Freeport, I think about 10 officers from Freeport, and we had about 10 from New Providence supplement those in Abaco. I'm pleased to say that the Bahamian citizens that are in Abaco is giving the great support to the team. Investigations continue into that double shooting last night, which left one man dead and another hospitalized. Police say two men were sitting in front of a home on West Avenue off Carmichael Road when a gunman opened fire on them. Shortly after, authorities say they saw a Honda speeding away from the area and they gave chase. The driver of the car ended up on Tonic Williams Darling Highway and crashed into another vehicle. Police say at that point, the culprits jumped out of the car and ran. Authorities were able to catch one of the suspects and they say a firearm was also recovered. Investigations continue. In news from the courts, jurors in the Curvin Neely abetment to murder trial have been dismissed until Monday to allow legal discussions to take place. 36-year-old Neely is accused of aiding and abetting in the murder of 17-year-old Enrico Major, the son of convicted drug lord Dwight Major and his wife Keva Major. Jurors have already heard evidence from a number of prosecution witnesses, including the victim's mother and two crime scene investigators. 17-year-old Enrico Major was brutally stabbed to death near the S.C. McPherson Junior High School last June. 36-year-old Dwayne Lockhart pleaded guilty to killing him on Monday and was sentenced to 24 years behind bars. Justice Bernard Turner is presiding over the case. Glendon Roll is defending Kervin Neely. Aaron Johnson is appearing on behalf of the Crown. Still from the courts, a judge has sentenced 41-year-old Jermaine Knowles in the red, gray, and white striped shirt to eight years behind bars after he was convicted of burglary. However, Knowles will only have to serve five and a half years of his sentence due to the two and a half years he has already spent on remand. Justice Indra Charles noted that she had been, in her words, very, very lenient with Knowles as the maximum penalty for the offense is 20 years. However, she indicated that he did not use a weapon or any other violence during the burglary and the victim was not injured. Crown Prosecutor Edmund Turner had asked the court to sentence Knowles to seven years in prison, citing the high level of burglary in the country and the fact that Knowles has shown no remorse. Turner also cited Knowles' extensive criminal record and the fact that he has a similar matter already pending. Knowles' attorney, Terrell Butler, also agreed that the sentence was lenient. However, she noted that he did not use any weapon or any violence during the incident as well. 
The police have expanded their scope of tackling crime in the country. And as Carla Palmer tells us, they continued another crime initiative that was recently implemented. Traffic on Market Street South was made one way temporarily this Thursday morning as Operation Demolition, led by the police, continued here in New Providence. The initiative involves tearing down abandoned buildings considered to be crime havens. On site, Assistant Superintendent of Police Anthony Roll gave the command for the Barco tractor to move on through and pull the structure down. We are demolishing them uh, so as to uh, bring some peace and tranquility uh, in the lives of the communities because you know uh, we have a lot of uh, our residents in our communities that are calling and complaining about these vehicles nightly. Uh, they are complaining that we have um, vagrants uh, hanging out in these abandoned buildings. We have would-be criminals uh, hiding in these buildings. Uh, they, we have found uh, guns, we have found drugs in these abandoned buildings. So it's an initiative to just demolish them so that we could reduce the fear of crime within these communities. While the police could legally have the buildings torn down, ASP Roll explains, however, that permission was granted in this instance. It, it, it happens in stages. You know, we don't just haphazardly go and knock down a building because we have to go and seek uh, the owners of the property and we'll get written permission from them uh, in writing to, to demolish uh, uh, the structures. So. As this one that is expressly behind us, we, we, have, have, we have all uh, written approval to demolish the building. Within minutes, the abandoned house was reduced to rubble and one less crime haven demolished. Reverend LG McPhee lives nearby. Houses them, it's good to break down that the criminal cannot uh, hide in the building. That is good. But the whole nature of the case is to go back to capital punishment. Since Operation Demolition was launched last week, six abandoned buildings considered crime havens have been destroyed. Carla Palmer, ZNS Network News. This portion of the news is brought to you by the new Shell and Letter, designed for extra miles.